So it's October, and for many people, it means Halloween. So for Ray and I over here at Asian Filmist, it means another thing, namely horror movies. So our theme for this video will be fun, bad horror movies. And what we mean by fun, bad is the movie is bad, hence the word bad in it. But the movie is also fun. The movie is so bad that you can have fun with it. For example, if you're watching a movie and you're like, what the heck? Like you have your WTF moment or you start laughing at certain parts of the movie when it's supposed to be scary, or you just go, that makes no sense. Then it is a fun, bad movie. Think of it as a horror movie, but it takes you out of that horror or thriller feeling. So with that being said, Ray picked five fun, bad movies and I picked five fun, bad movies. So without further ado, let's get on with the list. So the first movie in my list is Death Tube 1 and you can add two in there as well. So this movie is directed by Fukuro Yohei, and it's basically Japan's answer to Saw. This movie takes place in this abandoned warehouse where eight people are trapped and are being live streamed on this death tube channel, hence the movie's name. And you have this Pikachu bear costume villain that's pretty much like the Saw jigsaw villain of Death Tube. And he basically forces the contestants to play a killing game like in Saw. Now, if you watch any of the Death Tube trailers on YouTube, you might think this movie is really serious. Things are gonna go down and I'm gonna get really like frightened or horrified. No, if you watch this movie, I bet you'll be laughing a lot. Why? First off, this movie has some pretty bad acting. Other than like one or two characters, the movie's acting is uh, A lot of the actors either underact and have like little emotion, especially when their lives are being threatened on live stream or in some cases like the main protagonist he overreacts like he's overacting and you can just definitely see it and another thing the costumes are terrible take for example the Pikachu villain I mean you can find some much 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 better cosplays at anime expo than in this movie not only that but he's not really scary he's just like this guy in a Pikachu costume that's pretty much standing like 20 feet from the contestants unlike Jigsaw in the Saw series he's usually like behind a TV so you really can't get to him but in this case, he's right in front of you. So you might be asking yourself, why don't the contestants just jump him and just, you know, fight him? And the reason why is this Pikachu villain has his gun. And uh, yeah, he'll, he'll use it if you get close to him. And yeah, he'll use it if you attack him. I know it's really cheesy and I was laughing when he showed the gun. I'm like, okay. Look, the movie took me out of disbelief that this was a horror thriller movie. And I just started laughing half the time when watching this movie. Adding on to that are the silly skits. Unlike Saw, where you can get really squeamish at times because like the death traps are pretty brutal and there's a lot of blood and gore. In this movie, the skits are very childlike. For one of the competitions, you have to run around the room. Yeah, that, I mean, it feels like elementary school. In another competition, you have to eat donuts fast but one of them is poison. I know, when I was watching these skits that this Pikachu villain was letting these contestants play, uh, I just couldn't stop laughing. With that being said, this movie is a comedy horror movie. This movie will make you laugh. It might give you some thrills here and there, but I wouldn't take this movie too seriously. The next movie is Bunshin Saba 2. Now, Bunshin Saba is originally a Korean horror movie franchise. It, the movie came out in 2004, and China liked it so much, they pretty much made their own spin-off called Bunshin Saba 2. Whether the Chinese studios actually asked the Korean studios whether they can use the Bunshin Saba name tag, I don't know. But here we are at Bunshin Saba 2. So the movie starts off with six college graduates and after graduation, they do the real life thing and they go off on their separate paths. Some of them move to the US, some of them move to different parts of the country and so forth. But later in life, when this group gets back together, they find out there's some unfortunate accidents. So what better way to find out about these accidents than use a Ouija board, also known as Bunshin Saba in Korean. So they're doing this Bunshin Saba move, like Bunshin Saba. Nothing really good happens from using a Ouija board. So crazy stuff starts happening, as you can imagine, and people from the group start dying one by one. Now with Bunshin Saba 2, there's some explicit stuff in this movie, such as having sex with a prostitute, dating the boss's daughter, and blackmail. And when I was watching this movie, I was like, WTF, what the heck, right? Come from the old generation of the 1990s and 
early 2000s horror movies when it was more simple. Like the horror movies are about revenge, might have had cheating here and there, but it was more about bullying and feeling left out or not feeling appreciated. But with Bunshin Saba 2, but with this movie, I find with some of the newer Asian horror movies, they're getting kind of explicit and keep it simple, you know, or have a new twist onto the horror franchise. So yeah, this movie had a lot of WTF moments for me and probably for you as well if you choose to watch it. The next movie is Death Bell 1, AKA the horror movie that makes you think and solve problems while watching the movie. This movie stars popular actor Lee Bum Soo as well as Nam Guri from the K-pop group Sia. So the basis of this movie is that there's this elite high school and only the top students attend this academy. So one day as the students are in class, so a loudspeaker comes on and says, you guys are trapped in the school. Anybody that leaves the school will die. And to escape this misery, you have to solve problems. And the problems are very reminiscent of the Korean SATs, also called Sunung. And the problems aren't easy. Like I was reading some of these problems and I was trying to do them while watching this movie. So I'm supposed to be scared about this movie, but at the same time, my brain is hurting because I'm like, okay, I gotta solve these problems. And I'm like, okay, this is an interesting twist to the movie. I felt this movie had this like half saw element going on to it because there's a lot of like torture porn in this movie. Not to the extent of saw where it gets brutally gruesome and there's a crap ton of blood, and you, but you see some students getting tortured because they couldn't solve one of the problems. And I think this movie also has a social commentary about the Korean education system because there's so much pressure to do well, so much pressure to solve every problem, be 100% correct and perfect. So this movie actually wasn't really bad to be honest but I felt this movie could have been better. But in any case, it was a fun movie to be added to this list because it made me think it had a little bit of WTF moments, not as much as Bunshin Saba 2, but it pretty much had some unique angles to the horror genre. The next movie is The Wig, starring Chae Min-so as well as Yoo Sun. And this movie, as you guys can imagine, is about this wig. So it stars the so it stars two sisters, and one of them has cancer. All right, we already hit a Korean horror cliche. So this young woman that has cancer, she's feeling down, she's feeling depressed, she doesn't feel confident about herself. But one day she gets this wig, and she wants to look pretty, and she puts it on, and it totally changes her. And as you guys can guess, the wig is cursed. But not only that, as soon as she puts on the wig, she starts hitting on her sister's boyfriend. What? So basically the sister and then her sister's boyfriend cheat on that sister. And it has this weird love triangle where because she put the wig, she's going off and uh, cheating. Yeah. It's from there, as you guys can imagine, you find out why she's uh, being this playgirl and she's, you know, sleeping around promiscuously because she has this wig on. And you find out the backstory about the piece of hair. Now for this movie, I definitely had the WTF moment. I was like, okay, this is really weird. Again, as with Bunshin Saba, some of these horror movies are just getting scandalous now. Like you put way too much of this like love triangle and sleeping around and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, okay, all right. I, I guess I am seeing where this is going. Rather than a deep story, you just you just gotta have this like cheating thing going on. And um, I didn't really feel the story per se, but I was laughing quite a bit because of the movie's plot. And my last movie is The Grudge 3, the American version. Now you know a movie is probably gonna be bad if it's direct to video. And this movie is definitely direct to video. In this movie, there's a kid named Jake and he survives The Grudge 2. So you know that some bad stuff is gonna happen to him. He moves back to Chicago, his hometown, and he shuts himself inside a room 24 seven, covers the windows, he barricades his door, and he just sits in the corner. Why? He's afraid that Kayoko or Toshio is after him, which, they are, and they traveled all the way from Japan to Chicago. Yeah, that was my first WTF moment. A lot of the Japanese horror movies or inspired horror movies from the 2000s, they're doing this trans-specific curse transfer where they fly or float or whatever they do from Japan to the US. In this movie, it's no different. Not only does longtime mainstay Kayoko in this movie, but her sister Naoko is also in this movie. So this boy Jake has to find out how to break this curse. I, I was waiting the entire time how people were gonna die because in Juon, the Japanese version, or in the American version, The Grudge, I do like seeing where the ghost is gonna appear, like under the bed, under the blanket, from the closet, on the roof. And that was my fun watching this horror movie because I feel the American grudges 
aren't as scary as the Japanese grudges, especially Juon 1 and 2. So I was wondering how Team Kayoko and Naoko would fare against the American protagonists in this movie. And if you guys need any further evidence why this movie is bad or fun bad, you should hear what some of the critics have to say. One critic said that the producers basically just phoned in this movie, just put a crappy effort into making this movie, which I totally agree. And another critic basically said, The Grudge 3 makes The Grudge 2 look like a masterpiece. Ouch. So those are my five movies. Now over to you, Ray. Hey, thanks for those recommendations, Jason. And hello everyone, Ray here with my own list of bad yet fun horror movies to watch on Halloween. The first movie on my list is called Shirome and it's directed by Shirai Shikoji. Uh, he's the director of great horror films such as Noroi the Curse. Now if you're a fan of Noroi the Curse, you might know that it's a found footage style mockumentary horror story and Shirome is kind of the same except it uses uh, actors who don't really know they're in a movie. Essentially the story of Shirome is these movie producers pranking the hell out of J-pop girl band Momoiro Clover Z. And essentially during the time of the filming of this movie, they were still in their up and coming stage in their careers. Uh, they were led to believe that if they pray to this deity, this spirit called Shirome, which basically means white eyes, that they will be granted some power so that they can be successful. However, in order to contact Shirome, the girls have to venture through this haunted house and to reach the altar and then uh, recite a prayer and dance and song. And then afterwards, they should be able to get power from Shirome and become successful. And as you can probably guess, the girls are just terrified because you have the staff behind the walls behind there was just shaking the hell out of everything and scaring the girls making them scream and cry so essentially for the whole runtime of the story you have these j-pop idols freaking out and crying i mean as movies are concerned there aren't really any plots there's no real villain it's just a bunch of girls venturing through this haunted house getting scared and if you take pleasure in watching little girls cry then this movie is for you so the next movie on my list it's called the shock Labyrinth, directed by Shimizu Takashi, the director of Juwan and Reincarnation. Now you'd expect with the filmography to include movies such as those, you would kind of think that The Shock Labyrinth would be an interesting uh, horror movie. Most of the story is filmed in Fujikyu Highland, in the haunted house there, which is one of the best haunted houses in the world. If you've never gone, you guys should go. It'll freak you the hell out. I think right now it holds the record for the longest haunted house crawl maybe uh, i don't know if it is nowadays but anyways most of the filming is set there and it's about this group of friends when they were younger in elementary school uh, they venture into this haunted house against the against the wishes of the adults that accompanied them and along the way they accidentally leave one of their friends trapped inside. The last anyone has seen of her, she was seen being pulled underneath uh, some stairs and then no one has ever seen her again. But then fast forward some years later into their young adulthood, that friend pops up again uh, at the doorstep of one of, the, one of the friends. And while all the friends are enjoying their reunion, the missing friend uh, mysteriously fall sick so they have to rush to the hospital and they take it to the hospital but no one's there they start going around looking for a doctor then they suddenly realize that they're once again trapped in this haunted house but it's no mere haunted house it is as the name of the, ti the title of the movie implies it is a labyrinth and as they go through the different corridors they go open the different doors they see uh, they see spirits well it's not really spirits it's really them as as children uh, running around and basically doing the stuff that they were doing way back when. So as the adult versions interact with the child versions, you know, you encounter a lot of paradoxes and what ifs. It doesn't really make sense, but that's kind of the fun part of the shock ladder because everything that they do, that the adults do in relation to what the kids do, if you try to put two, if you try to think about it with uh, like really logically, none of it makes sense at all. So there's a lot of just WTFs being tossed around. But then you kind of watch it because it's entertaining to see the looks on the actors' faces because it doesn't even look like they know what's going on with the story. And you know, I, I, 
Admittedly, I like to watch this movie just because I really like the haunted house in Fuji Q Highland, and I think that alone uh, makes me, that alone keeps me uh, throughout the story. The next film on my list is Phone, directed by An Byung Ki. It's a Korean horror movie, and most recently I had reviewed this story, and after re watching it, I felt I had to include it on this list because at the time I really enjoyed Phone, but then rewatching again, I didn't really like it at all. It, essentially, it's about a girl, a journalist, who is forced to change her phone number because she had printed so many scandalous articles that the people she would expose would send her threatening phone calls. But after changing her phone number, she starts receiving these strange anonymous phone calls filled with nothing but just ambient noise. But ever since she starts receiving these phone calls, strange things start happening involving her close friends and their daughter. And she starts to hear stories of a high school girl that has mysteriously died and she was the original possessor of this phone number. And so as horror stories go she starts to see the ghost of this dead high school girl and now she has to unravel the mystery as to why this ghost is causing trouble for her and her friends. I mean overall it has the makings of a typical Asian horror movie but you the real entertaining point of this movie is the acting of the young girl the girl who plays the daughter in the story. I mean her facial expressions are so over the top because it turns out that she actually gets possessed by this by the ghost of the dead high school girl and so when she's going into crazy possessed mode she does all these weird facial expressions like her ha ha I mean, I might be over exaggerating a little bit, but that's kind of what you interpret once you see it. I mean, I hate to talk bad about the acting skills of a young girl who's, who at the time was probably in early elementary school, but you just can't help but laugh as those facial expressions uh, take you out of the story frequently whenever they're on. The next movie on my list, it's another Korean horror movie called White. Melody of the Curse, and it's directed by Kim Gok and Sun Kim. And just like Shirome, which I mentioned previously, this story, well, while not being a found footage style movie, it's, it follows the story of a K-pop band. And these girls, they're kind of like on the lower scale, the lower, uh, the lower rung of the ladder of popularity. However, they're you know they're trying to build themselves up to become uh, to become trendy to keep basically keep their jobs. But they can't help but just fight and bicker amongst each other. But one day, the leader of the group she stumbles upon this old VHS tape, and then she, just out of curiosity, she plays the VHS tape, and it turns out that there's this really catchy song with this really tr a really cool looking dance that's. Uh, imprinted in the film of this VHS and so no one really knows uh, who the original artist is, who the original artist is uh, so what do the producers do they decide hey you know no one's gonna no one's gonna file claim to this song let's just copy this and rework it so it fits our image and so as these horror stories go it turns out that the tape is cursed and ever since the the, the band decides to copy the moves and the song they become insanely popular. However, it comes at a price. Uh, they start seeing strange visions of the girl uh, who is the center of the K-pop group in the VHS. And so much like Shirome, expect to see a lot of screams and cries from these idols. But what I like about White versus Shirome is that you actually see these uh, idols get picked off one by one. And I think it's kind of satisfying. You see them all become like divas. They each have their own unique skill as to what any particular K-pop band would have. Like you have the nice singer, you have the, the dancer, you have the pretty face. And this K-pop band in this movie has all of that. And it, it kind of makes fun of those types of tropes and, make, and delivers uh, this horror story where every one of them gets picked on by this ghost. And so the final movie on our list, I kind of have a love and hate uh, relationship with this movie. I absolutely love this movie because it features some of my favorite characters, but I, I can acknowledge it's not 
a good movie but at the same time this movie is kind of self-aware of that and that is Sadako vs Kayako directed by Shirai Shikoji the director of the aforementioned Shirome and so Sadako vs Kayako follows the follows the lead of other uh, horror movie crossovers that have come to Hollywood before namely Freddy vs Jason and Alien vs Predator the story follows these two girls one who is cursed by Sadako's curse after watching the cursed video and and one is cursed by Kayako after she has entered her house. And so these two kind of work together and then they they kind of come to this conclusion that the way to get out of being cursed by these two ghosts is to have these curses fight against each other. And the way they do that is that these two girls, they be, they also become cursed with the, with the other ghost curse. They both want to kill their prey without anyone else getting into the way, including the other ghost. So it turns into this really ridiculous, as it sounds, story. But what I like about Sadago versus Kaiko, it's kind of self-aware in that, you know, it's, you know, it has a few jump scares, but at the same time, it's kind of reworked from its original adult story to a more teen friendly story because the main characters are all young folks. I mean, they, were, they weren't they were trying to market this as a genuinely scary movie. They're just trying to have fun with it. And that's why Sadako vs. Kaigo, you know, it's meant to be watched not as a true horror movie, but just kind of a fun way uh, to see these two characters who've come a long way since their debut and see them in a new light and just have fun with the story. So yes, that was our list on five bad yet fun mo horror movies you should watch on Halloween. What did you guys think? Or what kind of bad horror movies do you think you guys like to have fun with? Let us know in the comments below. And as always everyone, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to Asian Filmist for more reviews and discussions on Asian films. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and you can follow me on Twitter at Reimaru555. You can follow Jason at I am Janta. And yeah, thanks again guys and we hope to see you guys again in the next video. Take it easy.